Okay. Hey, everybody. I am here with the amazingly talented Garfield Wilson. I am so happy to see you. This is hey. so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um so how's everything going how are you doing i'm doing i'm doing very well doing very well um it's been a roller coaster of a ride for a little while and when i say roller coaster i mean like really really great and then just the ebb and flows of being in the business of film and television you know what i mean um you know it, it's it's interesting because as i'm talking to you and i'm thinking about you know Twitter and I'm thinking about Instagram. I mean, you really just kind of show your best stuff. And I'm pretty strategic with Instagram. Truth be told, I'll show like stuff about my family, my kids, and stuff that I've going that I've got going on. Um, but I mean, it, the the struggle is real. I mean, like what you you know the I've I've had I've been extremely blessed to work on some unbelievable projects. Um, but the number of projects where you know, there's a rejection or I come close, but no cigar is, is a lot. You know what I mean? To be an actor is to have, you know, is to, is to, is to know your truth is to go forward and be prepared to like have a lot of disappointment or a lot of just, just close, but not no cigar kind of a moment. And then to, to really push forward and, and know that, that, um, you know the the opportunities that don't go your way your way are the ones that aren't necessarily for you and that just kind of leaves you open for other opportunities or makes you grow in a different way so that the next time you get an opportunity which are always coming down the pike um you're better prepared for that right yeah and i mean just me knowing you personally you are the hardest worker no. in general <laughs> just all around because look you're a jack of all trades fitness uh, singing, acting, I mean, and you're a great parent. I mean, Thank you. You, you do show it, but I mean, and it's funny because I go on Hulu and all of these other things, even Netflix, and I see you on these shows and I'm like, why are you only on an episode here or there? And why are you getting shot? And why is this? I need more. <laughs> and every time I tell everybody, I'm like, oh my God, I know him. Um, and it's always so great, but it's one of those things where, when you see someone so talented, you want more. And, you know, I really do. I personally, I, and I know there's others out there. I want to see more. So I hope that, especially with the things that you've been doing recently, that you just get more opportunity because I really feel like you can give so much more to this world. Um, you know, and especially just bringing more diversity into just acting in general. I think that that would just be so great. And I'm not just saying that to kiss your butt, you know, because I, <laughs> I, I truly mean that you are an extremely talented person. And I really feel like the world needs to see more of you. So, wow. I, you know what, that's, that's a massive, massive compliment. And I so appreciate you uh, saying those kind words. I really appreciate that. Honestly. I mean, like, we've known each other for a very, very long time. I like the top of this hour, we we're talking about being friends since 2015. And, wow. you know, we've kept in touch online and, uh, you know, we spoke and I, I, I can't even remember the last time we spoke, but to, to that end, I mean, I, I, um, that's the goal. I mean, last year was probably my best year yet. I did four months on uh, Disney's big budget live action, Peter Pan and Wendy, where I landed a wonderful supporting role as one of Captain Hook's pirates uh, named Gurley. Cannot wait for that to come out. I think that's going to come out this Christmas, but, you know, Disney hasn't officially um, said anything, but I'm hoping that it will. Oh, um, so. And then <laughs> right after that, like I just, I hadn't even shot my last scene on Peter Pan and Wendy. I had signed a five-year deal with Netflix uh, for the Ivy and Bean movie series, which has been so gratifying uh, for me. We did three movies, which is three books. They, there's 12 books in the Ivy, Ivy and Bean uh, novel series, which is a bestseller. And what they had planned to do was do each book as a one hour family movie. Mm -hmm. And we did three last year. Um, I thought we we're going to do three this year, but they wanted to wait until it came out, which it just came out last Friday, September 2nd. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that everybody loves it. And then we get to go back and do it again. Uh, and then, yeah, and I've done uh, 
some other guest starring uh, roles here and there um, that are that are coming out. I'm excited about Percy Jackson. I did uh, I did a a one little teaser episode um, for the first season that's coming out on Disney Plus, nice. and then hopefully season two they'll bring me back and we'll get to do it all over again. But that 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 series is going to be absolutely epic, and that was a lot of fun to do. That's the first time I've ever worked with some heavy heavy prosthetics so i won't say what i was doing but uh it'll be fun to watch no no spoilers because <laughs> if, rec- wanna... if you can recognize me <laughs> that's the thing i want to see if i can recognize you when it, when it actually comes out um which is exciting because i actually i love the percy jackson books like they were they were really well written and they're a lot of fun because you get the mythology and yeah um, oh i love that stuff so much but um, yeah, I'm glad you brought up Ivy and Bean because, you know, we saw some of the pictures from the premiere and stuff like that. I was like, oh, yeah. that's so amazing. <laughs> you know, Such a fantastic. Ear to ear. And I was like, oh, this is so great. I'm so excited to see this. Um, and I actually can't wait to watch it because, you know, it's it seems just like a fun a fun series and actually I'm like, I now I got to check out the books. So I didn't realize that it was that big like of a of a series yeah now. yeah it was it was it's a it's you know once i booked the series i was telling my my kids about it and my oldest daughter true was like oh my gosh she used to check out that book when i was like eight years old I'm like whoa okay and i didn't realize how popular it was and you know the the, the one thing that is really uh prevalent when you're doing a, a project or any project is you never know how it's gonna land how they're gonna edit it all the post-production stuff with the music and the pacing of it all you can do is feel good in what you're doing and get the get the performances you want to connect with the director and your your castmates and going from the production of peter pan and wendy which is the biggest project i've ever been involved in i mean that was that was as epic as I can imagine any Marvel movie would be. You know what I mean? Just yeah. so many moving parts, so many, so many crew members, so many cast members and background and stunts. Just unbelievable. And uh, I tip my hat to our producer, Jim Whitaker, and, uh, and our director, Je- uh, David Lowry. Uh, David never, never uh, was so steady, so calm, and so accessible. I had such a wonderful relationship with him and he and he was just always available to chat with about the scene and how we're going to do it and how we're going to collaborate and then working with uh all the kids that were involved in that mm-hmm. um uh ever anderson uh, mila jovovich's daughter um uh she's joshua who plays john oh my god she's <laughs> and super pro oh yeah so yeah, yeah. pro well, like, like, look at who her mom is. I mean, come on. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> she comes from, she comes from good lineage and she's yeah, got yeah, the yeah. genetics for it. She's, she's so good at what she does. And all the, the kids that were, you know, the kids that played her, her younger uh, siblings, Joshua and Jacoby were just brilliant. All the kids that played the lost kids, there were like, I think 10 of them, they were just unbelievable. And then let's just talk about the fact that I got to work closely with Jude Law and Jim Gaffigan. You know, um, you have an idea of what you know you 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 hope it's going to be like to to work with uh, with um, actors of that caliber, and you know, just growing up and and watching them do their thing. And Jude's got such a such a filmography. He is he is one of the nicest individuals I've ever worked with, and such a pro as well, and so collaborative. That's the thing that creates a magic. And you when you work with someone like that, and you see them do their process. There is no air of arrogance or entitlement or I'm an A-list. He is really passionate about the work and about the character and about the story that we're trying to tell. So him and David and anybody that's involved in the scene, whether it's be me or the stunts or whatever, when we're like blocking the scene, he's actually collaborating to make the scene better. So he's you're seeing his process happen in real time. He doesn't close off the set. Everything's happening around him. And it's just like, wow. And he's such a nice individual. He's so funny. And him and, and Jim Gaffigan is just brilliantly funny. Mm-hmm. Like he's just crazy. Just keeping a straight face in between takes is just really difficult <laughs> to do. And then going from that to going to Ivy and Bean with Alyssa Down being our uh, our, our director and uh, commander in chief. And then Anne Brogan being the producer. Those two were like the dynamic duo. 
And because of the vibe of the show and having Madison and Kesley being Ivy and Bean, mm -hmm. two brilliant child actors who are just almost brand new to the to the to film and television, but came in with such flushed out characters and the, the energy and the vibration of that set, just such collaboration. And then my co-stars, I mean, like Lydia Jouette, who plays Nancy, uh, Marcy T. House, who plays my wife, Charlotte, and then JC, uh, who plays uh, 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 Kat, uh, Caitlin. <laughs> I can't, I'm, I'm trying to get all the names right uh, for the characters. Uh, I've known JC for such a long time. We, we did scene study class together. She's brilliant. And I'm so happy for her to do this uh, with me because it just, it just creates that chemistry on, on, on camera. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was just such a, such a wonderful, wonderful set to be in. And the one thing that I love about Ivy and being watching it, because I remember an actor was, was talking about going to a premiere, the red carpet premiere. And then after doing the premiere, he would, he would go out and buy tickets and go see it with like just regular audience just mm -hmm. to get the vibe because everybody's just so jacked up and energized and enthusiastic about the premiere and they really want it to be good so you, it's really difficult sometimes to get a sense of really how this show is landing when you watch it in the theater at the premiere because everybody just wants to love it so much and everybody does love it so much because they're so connected to the project right well mary and i my fian my fiance this past friday when it first released we got all my three kids together. Uh, her son came in and her son is 11. My oldest is 19. Then my son's 17 and my daughter's 14. And we just made burgers and watched them. We just kind of like, I was just nervous watching it with them. Mm -hmm. And they loved it. It just, it felt different watching it with them. Not any better, but just different watching with them because they, they didn't have any vested interest in it. Right. And my kids and Felix are super honest. If they don't like nothing, they will tell you they don't like it. Those kind of go, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, but they were like totally into it. And True was, uh, I was so overjoyed with her reaction because she's 19 and she's into so many different other things. And this is legit a family movie where the kids that are five to nine years old will love it and it'll be great for their parents to watch it with them. But it, it was nostalgic for her because what the kids were going through reminded her of her friends when they were little girls using their imagination. And it was really, the show is just heartwarming in the sense that it's about two little kids that are totally opposites that become the best of friends and they have the best imagination and they have all the hijinks and hilarity with the neighborhood kids. So I'm really, really proud of it. Well, that, that sounds like so much fun. And I think that we can all kind of relate to that in a way because I mean, yes, it, it may have been a little longer for us, but we were still kids. And I mean, <laughs> I still use my imagination a lot because I'm, I'm still, I'm a child. I don't care what anybody says. I still play, games, <laughs> I still, you know, whatever. It's just, but I've always been a kid at heart. And, you know, I think that shows like that are great because you can kind of relate back to your inner child. Um, so I'm looking forward to it because even the trailer, it just looked adorable. You know what oh I my mean? god so i don't have kids but i'm like but you can still relate to anything because there are still adults in it you kind of see how the parents or friends relate yeah. to kids and all of that stuff so i mean it's it's definitely for all ages uh, i think so i think so it, it strikes me as like you know uh, the person i think that really does it best in terms of like tapping into the the imagination of kids and connecting with them on a visceral level and then at the same time touching on that inner child within us all is steven spielberg mm -hmm. Do you know what i'm saying oh yeah and this ivy and bean series speaks to that to me because when i watched it with our kids it just felt so heartwarming mm -hmm. and there was no like big bad evil thing and like the the worst name that's being called by anybody is being calling her older sister a booger head you know <laughs> whereas <laughs> You know, it's, it's all, and the, the the parents, like us as parents, we're just, we're, we're really encouraging our kids to use their imaginations. I love the fact that it's timeless. There's no technology or cell phones or computers involved. It's just in the backyard, you got dirt, you have your costumes, you got your tree houses, and you got the neighborhood kids on their bicycles and skateboards. Yeah. 
And that's what's happening. You know what I mean? And that's what I remember as a kid. And that's what I love the most. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I think definitely technology has kind of taken over a lot. So it's nice to kind of get back to the roots and see just how pure child imagination just can be such a beautiful thing, right? Like, yeah, I, it's yeah. I remember when our kids were really young at like Ivy and Bean, and we would just have toys in their room and just would love the fact that they would go in there with by themselves or with their siblings or bring over a play date. And it was just about their imagination. It wasn't about <laughs> plopping them in front of a TV and putting on a DVD or having phones accessible to them and playing games. It was about them with their with their dolls or with their crayons or something like that. And I think that the thing that, that I, that I, that I hope the most from this series is that it taps into that imagination and inspires kids to get off their phones or to not be in front of the TV and get out into the backyard and get into some kind of trouble. Oh yeah. Good, climb, fun, the dirt, climb a tree. Like I can't you know what I'm saying? Can tell you how many times I would be in a dress almost like my Sunday or Easter dress. And then I'd come in with dirt and maybe carrying a couple worms or potato, but <laughs> my mom was like, she, she's a tomboy, but she wants to still look pretty while she's doing it. Like, cause exactly. I still love all the dresses and stuff, but I'm like, no, I want to go play and get dirty and have fun. You know, you know, you know, what's awesome is that, is that the first episode of Ivy and Bean, the title, like it's just called Ivy and Bean involves dirt and worms. Does it really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's amazing I swear I didn't say on that I, I know which is amazing that you said that because <laughs> I cannot wait for you to watch the first first movie because it involves dirt and worms oh my god I'm, to I'm totally gonna tell you what I think about it when I'm like oh my god there's worms and dirt um that's super cool well I mean look I just I I am just so excited for you with all of the things that you do. And, you know, like we were saying, we've known each other for a while. It's yeah. still weird to say that True is 19. I know, right? Okay. Like that's, that's weird to me. <laughs> I'm like, I feel old now. You know, it's not that long ago. It's not that long ago. There's I mean, you... so much that has happened in such a short period of time. Oh my like, gosh. You oh know, my you've got True's journey. You've got your son's journey. You've got, I mean, your journey. I'm like, I don't know yeah. what the office is doing yet, but I'm sure, you know, she's going to be doing something soon too. But you know, you know, it's freaky about Jazzy. Jazzy is like the most, she has the biggest personality out of all three of them, right? And she's the funniest out of all three. She has no <laughs> desire to be in front of the camera yet. But you know what I mean? Like, but she's all, she, she's actually a 90s girl. Awesome. Like she likes the baseball hat sort of like rhythm nation, huh. like some Nike airs or clothes is sort of baggy. She almost looks like she could have been on in living color. Do you know what I mean? I love that so much. Her <laughs> playlist is like LL Cool J, Tupac, Janet Jackson. Oh, that's girl and I need to hang out and just jam. <laughs> I'm serious. Like it's, it's really funny you bring that up though, because I was actually talking and I was like, have you noticed how like the grunge look and all of the 90s stuff is coming back? Like my, my jelly chokers are coming. Oh my back. gosh. And all this stuff and, and kids are parting their hair down the middle. And if you <laughs> put your hair down the side, they're like, oh, you're old. And I I'm, know <laughs> it's Here. so funny. When I look at my daughter, like she's going into grade, I think nine or 10, no nine. She's going to grade nine. And she looks exactly like, like some of the girls I used to hang out with when I was in grade 10, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like the nineties girl It's so funny to me. I love that so much, but How you know, what we, did? Around. we had a lot of good music in the nineties, not that the eighties didn't a have lot of music, good music, but I mean, we had so much, like I was even listening to like salt and Peppa and all of that stuff. Like, cause I have a, I have a playlist, nineties playlist, of course. Yeah. It has all this stuff from Nirvana to like different types of hip hop and stuff, Tupac, whatever. Like, and you're just like, I, it's just changed yeah. so much. And you obviously know, cause you are very musically in tune, um, you know, so, and cause obviously you sing and, yeah. uh, you know, you just kind of have this ear for it. And, you know, I, I haven't done anything in a really long time, but I'm just like, I kind of miss that stuff, you know, because the music nowadays, it's not that it's bad, but it's just, 
everything's almost all computerized and yeah. it's just yeah there's just something so different from when I was younger so you can find diamonds in the rough today you can find some oh, artists sure. that are like really pushing the envelope but I think broad stroking it music back in the 90s and then coming in the 80s when you talk about like you know from the 50s 60s 70s 80s 90s in those particular decades, there were cultural shifts. Like the, there was like seismic shifts. So that music, not only was it popular, but it meant different fashion. It made a different way of talking. It made a different way of occupying space. Like from grunge, that was actually a cultural movement. Uh, the 90s hip hop, like Belba DeVoe, Bobby oh. Brown. You know, all that stuff was like a, like the way they dressed, the way they, they had their hair. And like, it just, it, it created a different dynamic completely in high school. You know what I mean? Whereas now, I mean, there are like definitive fashion statements in, in, um, in high school that I see, like when I watch my kids, but it almost seems to be like retro to when I grew up. You know what I mean? Exactly. Whereas those decades were, were indicative of those decades you know what I mean oh, now we're sure. looking at throwbacks <laughs> and, and you know we when I think of like an artist like The Weeknd mm -hmm. with the synthesizers and the way his tone of voice is reminiscent of Michael Jackson mixed oh. in with like aha uh -huh, and you know those types of bands it's it's it's, it's and and kids today are like man this is brand new it's awesome yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, let me take you back. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's just rewind real quick. Nothing, nothing dismissing the weekend because he's a dope artist. But oh, like, yeah, for sure. His sound is like, man, that takes me back to like high school. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. No, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just like the, the last song that Bruno Mars came out with. And now, of course, I can't think of it. It makes me laugh so hard. Oh, is that uh, Skate with, uh, with um, uh, right. oh, what do they call Silk Sonic? That, that think... groupie? Yeah, Silk Sonic, they had the... Was, um, it's the one where, uh, how does it go? She got me paying a rent. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that song cracks me up, but it almost gives me like Earth, Wind & Fire vibes. And of course, yeah. it's fire. And I'm like, and don't get me wrong, because I love Earth, Wind & Fire. I love old R&B. I like... I, totally. I love that, you know, things are getting a refresh, basically. Totally, totally. But, when you hear all these kids go, oh, that's new stuff. Yeah, I'm digging this. I'm like, oh my God. Like I was listening to that stuff with my grandmother. Like this is- Yeah, <laughs> they're doing it so well. The Weeknd, yeah. like Sonic with uh, Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars. Like that album, I played that album to death. Yeah. Like my kids got sick of that album when they drive in the car with me mm -hmm. because, and even the way they, 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 they dressed- even their videos, yeah. it's mm -hmm. all throwback instrumentation. Instrumentation, it's lacking computers because they're playing it live off the floor. I mean, Anderson right. Pack is like one one of the best drummers out there. He's nothing but feel. And then Bruno Mars, he grew up in Vegas playing with his mom and dad. Oh, yeah. He was like the youngest Elvis Presley impersonator mm -hmm. ever. And he's like, I've seen him in concert one time. He's crazy live. So you put those two together and you do that throwback vibe. It is nothing but gold. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, again, pure magic. It's pure magic, but it is a throwback. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. That, that's what cracks me up. Because I mean, again, we all know that there are throwbacks. And I mean, all of us have done it, you know, yeah. in our, in, like not uh, me personally, but meaning like music, they all kind of grab from the greats, right? Totally, and totally. Like, oh my God, I love the sound. I kind of want to, you know, dig into that deeper. And then they put their own spin on it. And that's super cool. I have no problem. Yeah. With that. Um, but yeah, I mean, have you been doing anything new with music? You know, I haven't had a lot of time to do it. I mean, I know you're busy. The, you're the, busy. During the <laughs> pandemic, I I did some recordings, and I've got this buddy of mine, AJ Devera, and we connect so beautifully in terms of music and what we like to do. And we did this recording project called The Dark Horses, and mm -hmm. basically, we're just doing songs that we just love, and there's no rhyme or reason. And we do some sort of mashups. I'm going to throw out a video in the next week or so. And uh, I don't know if you see my Instagram, but there's one where I did Fix You. Yes, of um, course. Yeah. One of my favorites. Yeah. Okay. And I did, uh, I did actually a real music video for Purple Rain. Yes. So that's a project where I we would go in the recording studio and we do these songs that we loved and we just kind of like do them for fun. And as far as doing music is concerned, that's been the most fulfilling 
thing that I've done because I'm really happy with the way those things turned out. Um, I would love to, you know what I'd really love to do? I would love to do a project like a movie or something like that or a series and be able to sing the soundtrack, to sing some oh, of the songs. I would that'd love be so much fun. I would love to do that. Um, on Peter Pan and Wendy, I got to sing um, a little bit. And uh, cause the pirates have shanties and things like that. I yeah. won't do any spoilers, but like, man, that was just like one of the, that, that was a lot of fun. Like that production is all over the place. And it is, it is such a tribute to the animated movie that they did in 1953, which is one of the reasons why I'm excited to see if it comes out at Christmas because in 2023 would be the 70th anniversary for Peter Pan at, um, for Disney. Oh my gosh. That you know would be saying? really cool if they, yeah. I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe we need to start a petition and say like, hey, you're going to get this out during Christmas. You know what I mean? That's and not only that, not only that, I would love for it to go into the theaters because if it comes out at Christmas, you know, what you want to do at Christmas is take your family to the movies. That's one of the things you do, right? And oh, all, yeah. remember, you know, that's growing up, you know, like these big movies would come out at Christmas time, whether it be Star Wars or whatever they would come out at christmas and you just go to the movies during the holidays i would love for it because it's such an iconic character for it to be in the theaters rather than disney plus you know what i'm saying oh for sure for sure a hundred percent such I a mean, big movie and i think at the end of the day you know just having kind of a new twist on an old gem yeah i mean if we think about it there's probably a lot of things that we would have to go back and change from some some disney cartoons oh you know you know it's funny you know what's interesting about that is that i want to watch the disney movie mm -hmm. um peter pan the animated movie and yeah. before before if you watch it before the movie actually starts they do a disclaimer yeah about diversity or that some of the opinions back in those days were yes. not, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. It wasn't. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, cause if you think about it, you've got the crows from Dumbo, you've got, mm. and they did bare necessities. Like the, there's a bunch of even, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, it was just this gentleman singing with the birds and all of this stuff. It's, it's just been so long since I've watched it, but we grew up on that stuff. And of course, as a kid, you don't, you don't get that stuff, right? Like that, yeah. that, that's never imprinted in your brain. A lot of totally. those are learned. So you go back and watch these things and you're like, sweet baby Jesus, we can't, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh no, my no, God, no. no, because the crows are black. They're speaking as African-Americans, yeah. not only African-Americans, but African-Americans that were slaves. Exactly. And all of that stuff. And then when you talk about Peter Pan, the animated series, how they depict uh, Native Americans, yep and 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 what was what was considered funny or endearing is just so not anymore right. so with this live action i mean the cast is so diverse and they're not called the lost boys anymore it's the lost kids um they've they've really stepped up and, and done some wonderful things with their casting and storytelling so i'm super excited for kids of this generation and kids that grew up with Peter Pan to be reintroduced to Peter Pan in this way. That's going to be so awesome. Like, and, and it's always great to see how we kind of grow. Yeah. As, you know, a human race, unfortunately, some don't grow as quickly, <laughs> but at least some of True. us do, or at least try to correct the wrongs of yeah. previous generations, or at least acknowledge that maybe we weren't the most open-minded or, you know, humane as we should have been. So it's really nice to see that also the, the, the movie and television communities are also trying to, you know, break those barriers and, yeah. and basically make things more diverse and show that there is a place for everyone and all of us, no matter what. Um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a very, very slow process. You know what I mean? I think in terms of like, uh, diversity in film and television which is getting so much better and gender equality as well and uh just that equity with pay and things like that um but i've always said i've said it in a, in a number of different interviews that art represents life do you know what i mean mm -hmm. and the thing about film and television for for a very very long time in the industry is that the world is so beautifully diverse 
And things happen to people that happen to be Asian, that happen to be white, that happen to be black, that happen to be interracial, that happen to be in the LGBTQ community. And it doesn't have to, it doesn't, it doesn't, it isn't because of who they are. Just life happens. So love happens trials and tribulations with relationships happen and Mm -hmm. things happen with their jobs and they can actually be in a fantasy movie and like things happen to them you know what I mean so making it so that the leads of these movies or these television series that are that are that are cutting edge doesn't have to have a lead actor that is Caucasian and square jaw you know what I mean Mm-hmm. Or that it has to be led with a male. It can be led with females, you know? Yes. Um, there was a Netflix documentary out of a little while ago. I think it was Netflix or something like that. That was um, uh, the actor that was not Susan Sarandon, but Thelma Louise, who, oh my God. Oh, um, uh, from A League of Their Own. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, oh, crap. You put, nope, nope, out my brain. Out my, <laughs> yes, I know who you're talking about, though. I will, I will caption it. I will put it okay. in. Okay, okay. Or okay. I'll remember. <laughs> she she has this movement um, that started after you know uh, Thelma and Louise and League of Their Own. Oh my God, I wish I could remember her name. Gina Davis. Yes. Oh my God. Gina Davis, such a brilliant woman, and she, you know, the film industry was like, well, you know, this won't work because uh, it, people won't come out and see, right. you know, a lead actor. It's proven them wrong so often. So her organization collected data. And if you ever get a chance to see this documentary or this show, it'll change your view of the movies and the television shows that you watch. I mean, there is a, there's a, there is a, there's a standard um, that very few projects meet. And now because of that, Jessica Chastain doesn't do a project unless the standard is met, right. which is two women having a conversation that isn't about a man or about their relationship with a man, that they can have a conversation that doesn't have to do with a man. Exactly. And there's so many projects out there, really good movies that don't meet that standard. Oh. Nope. I actually talk about that all the time. And I know the documentary you're talking about because I did see a clip um, where Gina Davis was talking about how A League of Their Own was supposed to be this movie that was going to give more women bigger parts. It didn't have to be all about men and all of these things. And yeah. Goes, and where are they all now? You know, that's that's not exactly her words, but I'm just, you know. Yeah. But, but Thelma Louise was supposed to do that. They had yeah. articles in, in, in Time so Magazine, The New Yorker. You know, they were supposed to bust open that glass ceiling and then yeah. League of Their Own was supposed to do that and yep. nothing after that you know what I mean it just I don't know I know but you know it just it just it's it takes a long change. time it takes yeah it's slowly working you have people like Jessica Chastain that's trying to make a difference with her standards and things like that so totally totally again it's I mean we'll see it in our lifetime but it's not I mean it's always going to be a very slow process people mm. aren't always open to change it's very difficult for people to to be open and just be like, oh yeah, sure. No, we're going to change. Me personally, look, I'm like, if something's wrong and we got to change it, we change it. I've just always been like that ever since I was a kid. Doesn't matter. Don't care if if it is wrong or if, you know, it, it gives me more privilege than someone else. And if that needs to change, then please let's do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's, it's, that's that, that the people that are running the studios or executives or the people that are making decisions are indoctrinated by sort of like a dinosaur narrative. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And it's it's almost, there's, you know, with the music industry and the film and television industry, it's like completely a creative industry. Yes. Both of them, completely creative. And that's, that's where people find their inspirations from like the movies and TV shows that they watch that are so impactful or the music. You can actually time time warp yourself back to a certain moment and right. who you're with and the smells and everything from hearing a song oh right and the thing that bothers me the most is that movements will happen like a like a, a movie will happen with the leading you'll just mm-hmm. like the, it'll have a the audience will have a visceral reaction to that or a band or an artist will come around and they'll have a visceral reaction and that will be the the, the new 
it thing. Right. And then the industry, whether it be film and television or music, will try to find the next thing yeah. like that, as opposed to like, let's create something just, you know, like that is, you know what I mean? Like just go to the, to the, to the, to, to the, what is it? The brainstorm room. And let's just yeah. create something yeah. amazing and see what happens if we feel it. I mean, Quincy Jones is one of the most iconic and greatest innovators of music ever. And mm -hmm. he's got such a diverse musical catalog and his standard for what's good or what isn't good isn't what's happening in the industry. It's I like, know. if he gets goosebumps, that's it. I know. You okay, know you're going to hate me to do this, but we're running out of time. Are we really? <laughs> yes. It's yelling at me. I got less than a minute. So Oh my God. This. We're going to have to do a take two another day. Let's do I, that. Let's do, this has been so much fun. Time is like, oh my God, why have we done this sooner? I know. We're going to do it again. So, okay. I'm gonna wrap okay. up. I miss you. We're going to talk. I miss soon. you too. Part okay. Two.